Hey guys, welcome to the Talking Mobility Show. I'm here once again with Michael, the man in charge of the BMW Hydrogen efforts. And today we're gonna do something different. We're in New York just a few mm -hmm. weeks ago and we did a yeah. whole assembly thing. Mm -hmm. You were fascinated me on showing the third generation of the hydrogen system. But right now we have here, of course, the second generation of the hydrogen system underneath this. This is the BMW X5 current generation, but there will be another car coming out in the future. And with that being said, I want you today to kind of show us where we go from here to the third generation of the drivetrain, which we have right there. Is the third generation of the fuel cell system, which will hit the market in 2028 within the iX5 hydrogen. Okay. The system is way more compact, so it, we reduced the size of the entire system by 25%. So this is actually a full scale. This is a full scale. Oh, so this is the actually. It's not a so, miniature. No, it's the full it's scale. It's not shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually it's a, it's a full scale model of the of the of the system of the Gen 3 system, and this system is as just said, much more compact like the Gen 2 was, uh -huh. so that we are capable to fit it in into the X5 completely flexible. Gotcha. So we now, didn't... Now walk me through some of the things that we see on here. For people that have never seen a hydrogen drivetrain, of course we don't have the, the tanks as well here, the hydrogen tanks, but this is the one that we have here. So ex explain a little bit like some of the components that we see here. Yeah, so maybe first of all, the main difference between battery electric and fuel cell electric is the way the energy is stored in the car. Okay. And the magic is that within hydrogen vehicles, the energy, the electric energy mm -hmm. is produced in the car alongside when, when you're driving. Okay. And the magic is happening in the stack right here in this component where all the fuel cells are stacked in. Okay, and so what's this called? What would be that component called? This is, this is the fuel cell stack. So the so fuel cell com stack, yeah. okay. Um, the current is then converted within the DC-DC converter okay. to the operating uh, voltage. Mm -hmm. This is the brain of the air compressor, which is here, okay. which sucks the air through the air filter and presses it into the system. The air is passing the intercooler mm -hmm. and the humidifier where the okay. air is intercooled and humidified to the right humidity mm -hmm. before it enters the stack. So now if you're looking at the second generation, what are some of the major differences? And I can lay that on the screen so people can kind of see both systems. Yeah, so the first thing is, as I just said, it's much more compact. Okay. So we reduced the, the size overall by 25%. Mm -hmm. It is more powerful and is yet more efficient, which okay. leads to more range for our customers. What have you learned from the second generation coming from that to the third generation? So first of all, we, we, we learned that this entire fuel cell system is a robust technology. This was the very, very first learning. And in several instances, we, we, we learned how to, how to do and how to, how to construct it in a way that it is more compact, that it is more scalable in terms of production. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, a really solid system at the end. And we're here in Tokyo, right, where hydrogen is playing such an important role for Toyota, your partner. Explain to me your collaboration with Toyota when it comes to the third generation also. Yeah, so Toyota not only shares the same targets as we do, so Toyota and we both think that hydrogen will play a major role in the future. And we are not only sharing the same targets in regards to hydrogen, but we also jointly develop this entire system. So both of our companies bring in all our con con competences on hydrogen development, and we are jointly developing this system. And maybe we should have started with this, but I know we've talked about this like in the past, you and I, we've done some interviews as well, but for people that see this video for the first time, a fuel cell vehicle is still an electric vehicle. It's just not powered by a you know, battery electric system. It's essentially you know, using water to create energy, basically. And is that a fair assessment? Did, yeah, I, yeah, did, uh, did uh, I learn uh, properly? Did, did I get a job yeah, or not? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, why did you choose to do a production series on a BMW X5 when yeah. it comes out in 2028? So we we are absolutely trying to bring down uh, CO2 emissions. And, and what, what we've learned the past year is that you cannot only rely on one technology because we also at the same time want to make our customers happy. And to co combine these two perspectives, we are absolutely convinced that battery electric will not be enough. Battery electric will play a major role, maybe even a dominant role in the future, but there is a need for a second zero emission technology, which is basically fuel cell electric. And as you just said, fuel cell electric vehicles share many, many components with battery electric vehicles and are also electric vehicles, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they are producing the electric energy 
while driving out of the hydrogen, mm -hmm. out of the hydrogen tanks, combining the hydrogen within this system yeah. with the oxygen out of the air. And yeah. what comes out is electricity and water. So why the X5 was the, was the first car, not a 5 Series, for example, or an X3? Just because so, of the size or? No, not just because of the size. So we were, we were seeking for a model which is working all across the planet. So we are a global player and we, we, we definitely aim for a car which is working on, all, on, on each and every market. Mm -hmm. And, and for, for sure, a certain logic applies that the heavier the vehicles are, the more the, the, the longer ranges the customers are driving, mm -hmm. the more towing cases you have within the vehicles, the more sense fuel cell electric makes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we chose uh, the X5 as the gotcha. first model. So I know that we can't talk specs because our gatekeeper here, Lisa, would not let us. <laughs> but remind me the specs on that BMW X5. I drove it a few times, but maybe tell me the specs on that, and then maybe you can tell me if we're going to get more on this one or not. Current X5 um, produces 401 horsepower okay. and delivers a range of 502 kilometers uh, okay. wheel-to-p cycle. The WLTP. Okay. In both uh, effects, we, we will move forward. Uh, so a huge step. We will get more on this yes, one than we we'll get power, on that one. More range. Okay. But <laughs> more not, the, fun not, not and, ready yet and, and, to <laughs> find out about that. But, but let me add some. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me add one comment. So we wouldn't be BMW if also a hydrogen vehicle would be sheer driving pleasure. So it will be great fun to drive and it will be a real BMW without any compromises. Gotcha. So now the final <laughs> question is before we go to the history of hydrogen, because we want to show that a little bit, you show that this is not your first time doing this. Um, what are some of the concerns that you've l learned from customers? Like, I know uh, refueling, it's a big one, but do you see improvements, especially here in Japan, when it comes to refueling stations and all of that, or refueling stations? Yeah, so, as just said, so hydrogen electric vehicles are electric vehicles too, mm -hmm. and the main difference is the way the energy is stored, yeah. and this thereof derived two major points uh, come from. So, first of all, you can refuel it very fast, yeah. and secondly, the energy is stored in as, as hydrogen, not in batteries. Okay. So it's an entirely different value chain behind it, which makes us as a company more resilient, not be so reliant on the battery materials. Gotcha. And for sure, the fast refueling yeah. is only possible if there is hydrogen refueling station, as you just yeah. mentioned. And uh, in Japan, there is a pretty dense network okay. uh, already in place. Uh, there are several countries where is hydrogen uh, available at stations, mm -hmm. um, such as Korea and such as uh, California. Yep. But there's still a long way to go. That's why we chose 2028 uh, for, for, for the launching the car. Yeah. Gotcha. Now let's take a look at this one for the last section of this video, because you know maybe a lot of people don't know the entire history of the BMW hydrogen. So I will let you, I will let you explain it. Sure. Bring this into relation to battery electric, because okay. yeah, good um, idea. You were not born yet, I guess, but... Uh, yeah. Barely. I missed the mark by one year. I'm not talking about missed the mark by one year. I got to talk yeah. to my parents. So, yeah, yeah. so, so in, 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 the, in the 1970s, uh, in Germany, there was oil crisis. Okay. We had car-free Sundays. Okay. And getting rid of the oil was really a huge point in the, in, gotcha. in the entire society okay. in, in, in Germany. And Already in 1972, where uh, yeah. Olympic Games took place in Munich, mm -hmm. we had an electric uh, 2002 accompanying oh, the marathon. orange one. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. you know this yeah, cool. orange one. And only seven years later, mm -hmm. we had the first hydrogen vehicle, which mm -hmm. was a five series with a hydrogen combustion engine. We're still here. Yes, we're still here <laughs> with a hydrogen we're combustion to save the engine. <laughs> so it was really, yeah. really pre-development car. Nevertheless, it was the first hydrogen vehicle we had in, in BMW. And um, roughly, roughly 20 years later, mm -hmm. we had a pilot fleet of seven series hydrogen vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, which was also based on, on hydrogen combustion with a six liter V12 engine. See um, right there, very cool. Yeah, and liquefied hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And alongside this vehicle, we had the, the H2R. H2R, yes. H2R. We're, 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 which is still FIA record holder for uh, high speed uh, with over 300 kma. I mean, and this is futuristic we, 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 looking we, too. Yeah, absolutely cool. futuristic. And we, we already back then proved that hydrogen is also sporty, okay. not only environmental friendly. Gotcha. Um, when what we learned out of this hydrogen 7 series fleet is maybe two things. First, burning hydrogen is not the most efficient way to yeah. use the yeah. gas. 
And secondly, liquefied hydrogen is not the pretty standard at the gotcha. stations. That's why we moved then forward with the first generation fuel cell car to fuel cell electric mm -hmm. to, to leverage the efficiencies. And out of this pre-development car, we then did the first IX5. I actually Island had a chance speed. to drive that one as well in uh, Miramar. That was the first time that I saw hydrogen. I didn't know, you know this one. Yeah, that's the uh, first I time I was in Mira. Like, exactly, <laughs> I didn't tell you that. It was the first time I saw the hydrogen. It was so new that I didn't yeah. know exactly what to make of it. You know, and then, of course, when I saw the second generation, uh, you know, that was even more impressive. Yeah, so, so okay, so that's the one that we are today yeah, with that one, this basically. Is this okay. car, and, and you probably know it very good. I did. I, yeah. I drifted at the North Pole, which was yeah, amazing, I, so I thank know. you. <laughs> <laughs> and, so. Where, and where do we move from there? So we go to so, Gen 3 that we just presented. Yeah, so this will be yeah. the IX5 hydrogen we will launch in 2028. Uh, you can see here a prototype car, mm. which we are already deploying nice. on our test tracks. And, and essentially, and the, the idea is, you know, that the design of the X5 will be the same for everything and you just have a variation of different drivetrains, yeah. right? I, yeah, I guess so ice, the, BEV, hydrogen. So the basic idea is to have all five drivetrains available in one car. Not at the same time, for sure, but to be yeah. fully flexible, to be fully technology open and uh, to provide all drivetrains to our customer, gotcha. which are needed in the different regions of the world. So final question for you, one that pertains to myself, of course, as always. Uh, when will I have a chance to drive this car? <laughs> <laughs> Soonish Not or a little bit later? <laughs> we'll Cause see. Because you, you know, now I got to see the whole journey, you know, so I, I got to see <laughs> where you go. You will that. be involved in the first journey So before 2020, well. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, yes, continue. <laughs> yes, continue. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, Michael, thanks once again, you know, with this one. I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk about specs and all of that in the future when you're ready to reveal and I'm excited as, as to hear. As we are ready to review. As soon as Lisa lets sure. us talk about it. Exactly. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for watching once again with the BMW Hydrogen here at the Tokyo Mobility Show. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you, Horatio. <laughs> <laughs>